Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Huh. Yeah, we gon' talk, we gon' have fun. We be on fire, we be lit lit. It's a unique hustle, big, big, big shit. Hey. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. It's a unique hustle, nigga, big shit. Yeah. Big shit, big shit, big shit. Huh. Name another podcast like this. Check it, check it, check it. It's a unique host. It's your boy ECO, and I'm here with the lovely official Miss Jamaica. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What's going on? Nothing, nothing. Say, man, you know I talk a lot. A lot. That's why I got a microphone. <laughs> you know what I'm talking about? <laughs> a lot, nigga. When I say a lot, I mean a lot, man. And, uh, you know, since I started this platform, you know who my number one, you know who. Yes, she gets sick of it. Yes, she hates yes, it. You know what I'm saying? Yes. You know, sick when you of do, it. Yeah, she don't like it. You hear it show after show after every show. Every show, show, yeah. They gonna hear it. They gonna feel us too. They can smell our cologne and all that over here. You know what I'm talking about? Wee. Say, man, check it, man. My boy, he's Leo, is in the house. Who? And you know what time it is, man. <laughs> Stop playing. You know what time it is. Y'all know. You know, y'all know me. All the people that been watching me know me, man. So, man, what's up? How you feeling? Yeah, yo. It's the <laughs> iron line up in this thing, man. <laughs> man, everything good, man. Everything is really good. Man, I, hey, man, when I when I, I hit you up the other day, I had did something and I tagged you in it. God tagged me in it. Amen. God tagged you in it. That was God. Yeah, God <laughs> tagged him in it. I'm talking about the dude, man. I tagged him in it. It was something I posted. It was about, it, it had to be about the pimp. It, it was something I posted. I don't recall, but yeah, yeah. I posted something, I tagged you in it, and you hit me back and said, for real. It was something, I don't even know what it was, but I know I did. I, I posted it, and then I was like, man, and you hit back. I said, why the hell I ain't called this man? Huh. Why I ain't hit him up on Instagram or something? Because I had met him years ago. I keep telling him that. I met him in his parking lot. He sold me a CD. That was not me, man. Well, who was it then? Yeah, that was the hustler in me. <laughs> <laughs> I said, man, this dude sold me. This was, and it was right after Pimp C had passed, yeah. man. So it was like, man, you know, because I'm a fan, you know. So I'm, I'm like, man. You know, because I always tell niggas, man, you know who the best is. Don't play. I had KLC on it the other day. I Check, hey, look, man, check it, man. You know what I'm saying? And that's my guy, man. Pimp, Pimp did something different for me. You know what I'm yeah, saying? And, and, and I mean, yeah, yeah, it was a whole different wave back then. I'm from the old school. <laughs> yeah, I told you that on the phone this morning. <laughs> see, see, I'm not from the new school. I'm from the old he school. He picked that phone up and called me. Yeah, said, yeah, first thing that. he said, I'm from the old school. Man. <laughs> I, said, Nigga, I, I knew it call. when you called me. You know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody talk on phone no more. <laughs> they want they to text. text. They text for everything. <laughs> I, I, me, I remember when texting first came out. I was like, man, he for weird, man. For real. You you remember when it came out? Don't try to play. Some of the young folks remember when it came out. I remember when uh, Yahoo email first came out. Yeah, 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 yeah. See, you going there? I mean, no, I don't. I'm young. <laughs> <laughs> Hotmail was the thing back then. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah let's get let's God. let's get it. Let's get it, man. So tell me, growing up in Port Arthur, man, what was it like down there? I, you know, I, all I know is I remember when that Texas sign come across on that video. You yeah, know what I'm talking about? Yeah. And well, I knew. Uh, for me, growing up in Port Arthur in its humble beginnings, it was just like any suburb till you walked outside and a nigga bust you in your shit because you was not in the burbs. <laughs> you was in the hood, baby. <laughs> wow. So so it was like a little wake up, you know what I mean? But it, it was beautiful. I wouldn't change nothing about it, you know what I'm saying? I'm not from the projects. I'm from the hood, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We had a nice house and everything, but but the rats was in that thing too. Yeah. And the roach was in that thing too. Yeah, likewise. And, 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 and our step pops was the little league coaches. Okay. So, you know, you got the, the one parent, the single parent household, mama strong, and then you raised by what's popping off in the streets. Mm -hmm. And whoever will give you some game, you know what I'm saying? So how did you end up how did you end up linking up with Pimp C? Um I knew them And Bon B. Yeah, I knew them from way back in the day as we all were young artists coming up doing our thing. We knew mutual people, you know what I mean? And I was in a sector on 11th Street in like the 20 some hundred block, uh, uh, 11th Street in PA. And we had a whole coalition of artists in there doing our thing. But my producer, him and Pimp was cool. Okay. So one uh, afternoon, we had all the artists that was making noise in Port Arthur at his house that day. And we were just kind of networking, but a lot of us was shy. You know what I mean? We was kind of standing off to each other, uh, mumbling raps and this and that, this and that. What phase was this in the, 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 the 
UGK phase was it? This is before UGK exists. Okay, that's what I'm talking about. Now this, we there. I'm there with you. Yeah, this is this is a young pimp C who carries a bag around with a um, So he had to be about 15, 16. Man, we was young. I was I was still drinking jungle juice and four ounces. We was <laughs> we was young. <laughs> so you really you you are amazing, man. So you was from the first beginning before the job deal and all that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Pulled off the small. Yeah, yeah. Like so, so basically they they was all in there, and I I knew of Pimp. I don't think he was calling himself Pimp C at the time. I think he was MCC, and he was there, and he was standing off to the uh, people he knew that he was close to, and we was just playing tracks, and everybody was kind of mumble rapping. But this being my home front, me and my partner Hard Time, shout out to Hard Time, we just start busting like we grab a mic and just start rapping. You know what I mean? And I think Pimp got irritated by it. So he like, nah, man, that ain't how you do it. <laughs> and I, I I almost got offended. <laughs> like, nigga, you in my hood. What you talking about, nigga? I've be, I been rapping and breaking ass. So what you talking about? But he walked over there and he tied his um his track machine into my homeboy mixer board or whatever. And he pushed a button and a beat came on. Well, the, well, the track came on. The music started playing. And then when the beat dropped, he was like, MCC, bop, 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 And he probably did like a 12-bar verse. But what he did sounded so different from what we did. So he actually taught me and my partner that day, y'all niggas wasn't rapping on beat. Okay. And I'm like, what do you mean wasn't rapping on beat? I know how to rap. But he he taught me sequence he taught me where it actually goes when when it falls so this is early in the game when we just battle rapping and just rapping we don't know structure we don't know song structure we just rapping you know what wow. i mean and that day he taught me that come in on beat rap on beat uh eight bars four bar hooks 12 bars this and that this and that so after that i always seen him and bun around Wow. I just smoke. I just smoke jays with Bun and talk shit. You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> I'm good now. See, see, I met Bun, and when I met Bun, Bun was so cool with me and my family, my kids, my daughter. But she left already. Mm -mm. Okay, but my yeah, when we met him, he was just real family oriented guy. Yeah, yeah. He, told, he, he flipped it on me. I was trying to get pictures for my kids with him, mm -hmm. and he told me he said uh, after we had talked, he was like, uh, "This was in Vegas. We was in Vegas. He up there somewhere," and uh, he was like. Uh, I said, man, thank you for taking them pictures with my kids. I had met him before, you know. Right. And uh, he was like, uh, he said, man, I said, no, nah, man, I said, you you a real one, bro. I said, man, I, I said, you, what I tell him? I said, you real or something mm -hmm. like that? He said, no, nah, you real. You the only brother here with your whole family with you. He seen that versus what I was seeing, you know. I'm, I'm showing my kids how to do this so they'll understand That's business. That's real. And he caught that, you know, take a real one to catch something. Man, like Bun, Bun is a real pot author nigga. You know what I mean? Like, you see the industry him, and, and he move how he move. But he come up during that time with me when he was in those places in the dark when the when the beef was popping off. He was showing up for these things. He was in the streets moving around. You know what I'm saying? So he is there. It's just as you mature, it's a grown-ass man. Now, he ain't trying to be off and tall, that negativity, this yeah, and that, this yeah. and that. I, I see. And you're talking about, lately I see y'all been going back and forth. I've seen that, too. Who that? Uh, you and that uh, 17, I don't know the guy. I, I didn't keep up with him. Uh, I beg your pardon? No. I didn't keep up with him. <laughs> so like you've been checking out that YouTube, hey, boy. We I'm got on, that, I, I'm we got on that YouTube. YouTube on fire. Y'all the ones on YouTube <laughs> doing that. Y'all said, he knew that they, uh, you cancel culture uh, uh, this cat. Yeah, well. I had I had kept my mouth shut for a long time because I didn't want people really knowing family business. Yeah, right. yeah. But it got so redundant that my my man was using the platform to go out there and do all the talking, and nobody was rebuttaling what he was talking yeah. about. And he had told me something a um, couple of weeks prior. He said that he uh, he wanted to apologize to Bun. Wow, and which is big. It's big. Yeah, but you know, uh, I never put. I, I, I shouldn't even put this out there, but I'm going to go ahead and say it. He said he wanted to apologize to Bun, and I'm like, nah, hold up on that. And he like, why? See, I knew he would go apologize, and then maybe two weeks later he have another episode, and it'd be oh. some fuck Bun B oh, campaign wow. after the apology. Bipo is he bipolar? Uh, he, 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 he. Bipolar he, is when you switch up, right? He takes he takes some, some pills. Okay. Uh, 
Look, I'm putting that man out there like that. No, no, I'm just saying. You <laughs> I know. seen the nigga with the medicine. I, I don't know what it said. It could have been for know, chlamydia. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just know, you know, when you change your attitude about something, is and you flip on it, and you flip from a whole 360 to something else. Mm-hmm. Right, right, and it's right. About, you know, you got issues. Yeah, well, I, 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 I had to get on his ass. That's, that's a little brother of mine, and, and he out there talking that shit, and he put my name in some shit. And and he didn't intentionally do it. It's just he was he was doing his spiel, but he didn't choose his words wisely. And he said my name associated with some uh, very untrue shit. So I clarified it. And at that time, also people were associating me and him of doing certain things together. So I wanted to draw the line so they could see. Start judging me on my own merit. I've been mm-hmm. working hard as hell for a nigga to associate me with some bullshit. You know what I mean? So ever, I just drew the line. I, ever since I seen you been stand up in my eyes, you know, like the time I met you, I always looked at you like you had so much love for what y'all built. That's I did. What, that's what, and you still do. But I'm just saying that's what I seen in you, and that, that's what stands out for me. So when I seen you on there, it was like he really don't want to be dealing with this like this. I really, I think. actually did. The shit was fun. Oh, okay. <laughs> Have you ever I, got I, to the I point where you, you didn't really, when, really when you, like, but you, but you hold it so long, 15 years, and you see a nigga doing habitual bullshit, and yeah. you don't say nothing about it. Yeah, but yeah. a nigga throw your name in the cross. Boy, now you just want to say, nigga, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, I've been I tried to, to say let the nigga years. make it. You know what I'm saying? I, I tried to make him feel like, hey, maybe he didn't even want to do you like this, you know? But I get it, you know, because big brother, little brother things happen to where you have to check different situations. Exactly. And, and, and if it come around and everything, you know, because you're saying it's a bipolar situation, so you got to kind of understand how to deal with people like that, too. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and it got to a point where I'm not saying that Bun believed that I was standing on his side with the uh, We Hate Bun B campaign, but because I wasn't coming to the internet or showing up anywhere disassociating myself, it maybe did look like I was part of that. But I thought maybe Bun can see through it because if you look over at what I'm doing, nigga, I'm over there doing the work of 10 men. How the fuck I got time to be, be being messy? Mm-hmm. But, but now that work of 10 men, it kind of allowed me some time, you dig? I'm doing a whole bunch of everything. I'm back in the studio. I'm doing the Tria gear. I'm doing Toro. I'm researching Airbnb. Hey, man, a nigga doing some of everything around this. Already. There, there's been a lot of different things that, like, you went on this one show uh, virtually. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was them boys out there. I don't know where they from, but they had a uh, they had a little old, they got a show, and you called in. You was driving, I think, when you called in. Yeah, yeah, um... Somebody was coming to look at my my, my other uh, 18 wheeler, and when we scheduled to do the show, I didn't want a counselor uh, because I wanted to fulfill what I said I was gonna do. Okay. And so I just stayed. I was off. I'd been off since like noon, but I just went on and stayed in the truck and uh, conducted the interview. It was a good interview, you know. Like I said, you 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 hold it down for for PA for show. Got to, you know, and and and, and it's, it's that's the that's what we need, man. You know, people that really Texas is, some like I said, Pimp was something different, man. He stood for Texas. That's what I yeah, can tell man. you. He didn't stand for, you know, he rep PA. Don't get me wrong, but he he meant something to the whole situation for the South, man. Yeah. And so that was that's what we don't have anymore. Uh, you're right. I'm not with, not with a voice like that. Not like that. Because no, when he really, spoke, everybody tuned in. He made them listen. He made them respect us, man. And he re- he didn't care if you didn't like our music. He'll flip it on you. Now it's country rap tune. Nigga. Yeah, yeah. He ain't even doing that no more. What y'all call it? We change. Yeah, we, we, and we jamming real like now. a jamming like a mug, and, and, man. And, and and so you was with him when the so what happened? With, I remember we talked about uh, this time. I distinctly remember us talking about the trio shirts because I was wanting to put trio shirts in here back then. I remember mm-hmm, that, mm-hmm. and it was like you was you was so in tune with the fact of if it ain't going to the right resources. Mm-hmm. That's what you were saying. Cause I, it was some trill stuff rolling around. Right. But you educated me on that. I never did bring, never did mess with it because of that. No, nah, it's I'm being real. I never touched it because of what you said that day. No, nah, it's it's good. Like it it's a bunch of inner workings going on. Like we were doing a Pim C Forever T shirts and some of those proceeds was going to his mother. Mother, yeah. You know what I mean? So we was pushing that campaign real, real so hard. So you meant that was that was a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. And we was pushing that campaign real hard. And I stand for knowing, okay, boom, this is my this is my partner, mama and, and, and children. 
So if I can push these and break them off, you know what I'm saying, some of the revenue, that feel good in my soul. You know yeah. what I mean? Now, if I'm just pushing it and they ain't getting none of it, yeah, it, it's vain. I'm, I'm being like every other culture exactly. vulture. Yeah. So it was the UGK shirts from Correct. Algiers. Algiers, Dan Algiers. I yeah. knew him. Then there was the Trio Gear. Okay. That's always been me. Okay. But I always tried to stay silent on that because I didn't want nobody – just think, oh, he the one behind that? Because sometimes sometime niggas don't want to support you just because it's you. Was Dan, Dan was <laughs> doing right by the shirts? Fuck Dan. <laughs> he wasn't Ooh. doing right by the shirts. <laughs> Fuck Dan Algiers. Yeah, no, yeah, no, well, no. I'm telling you because at the Dan, end of the day. Hey, a nigga that, hey, nigga that got that YouTube black, hey, boy, who else? <laughs> who else? Who next? <laughs> Fuck smoke. you. Fuck you. <laughs> Who's next? <laughs> so, <laughs> so Dan was, so Dan, I just had uh, uh, Mr. Lucci and Pookie on here, and I asked him about those shirts, too. Back in the days, I bought a lot of those shirts and sold we those all shirts did. because I, uh, you guys. That's we, why I bought them. We all them. did. We and all. I held. They was in this store for years, wasn't mm -hmm. it? And my other stores. I had several stores, and I had them in East Texas. I had them everywhere, and I was pushing them. I was spending money with this dude. This is the problem behind y'all. This is the problem though. The artists got too busy. They got too busy with the with the show money. Back in the day, when you have concerts. We're talking about bands pulling up and they're, they're dependent on this merchandise table. They're dependent on these ticket sales and just anything they can get a percentage of. Well, these rap niggas got too arrogant. They just want to come in through the bag. They don't want to touch nobody. They want to do their rapping and they want to get the fuck up out of there. Well, you left money on the table because they wanted some T-shirts. They wanted some of your new product, but you too amphibious. You don't want to shake hands with nobody. You don't want to embrace nobody. You don't want to take pictures with nobody. You didn't turn into something else. That fame must have got it. Yeah. So when I come in the game, I had this little uh, half-ass distribution deal, and a nigga pressed me up and was going to distribute me. That's how everybody would have caught on to me like they caught everybody else. But the nigga went bankrupt right after he pressed up my shit. So the nigga handed me all my CDs. So what am I to do? All my money, all my dreams is in them boxes. Mm -hmm. So I took the motherfucking boxes and started guerrilla marketing. I'm yeah, in the streets. Yeah. Hey, say what's up? I'm right there in Houston. Boom, 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 bop, 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 bop. So now I'm just this guerrilla marketing. That's how I'm surviving. I'm guerrilla marketing everything I create. Prior, I gave away everything. But a business cannot give away their product mm -hmm. or they'll go out of business. Mm -hmm. So basically, I gave away thousands and thousands of T-shirts, hats, CDs, flies, Kappa Beach parties, gas money, travel, hotels, this and that, any nigga hood. You know what I mean? Me and my trusted 4-5. <laughs> I did the same thing, so I know. Yeah. I did the same in thing. In God, in God. Yeah. So it came a time where I started getting booked a little bit, and I always demand, hey, if you're going to book me, I want my little old show money, and I want that merchandise table. Yeah. So yeah. when Pimp came home, he seen how I was moving. He started testing me like, what if I can give you the whole UGK old catalog? What can you do with that? My words to my brother was, nigga, that's just like you handing me some crack. It it's going to go. sell itself. It's going to go. And did it go? You know what I mean? Oh, yeah, yeah. It went. So basically when Algiers came through, he took advantage of the lazy rappers who didn't want to create their own beautiful T-shirts and collect 100% of the profits and then hire their partners. You uh, let a nigga take the money away from the coalition and give you a percentage. Therefore, this nigga over here struggling still got to go steal, hustle, rob, and go to the penitentiary because you didn't take 100% of the proceeds and you take a percentage and give some of your other people jobs. That's real. This fucking music is a tool and a taxi for us to get up out the combinations and situations that we've been placed on. The niggas that's in a penitentiary for 20, 30 years for selling $10 worth of crack. Wow. You gonna make $15,000 doing a show, rapping 15, 20 minutes, and this nigga here gotta go rob and steal? Wow. That's get that heavy. nigga a security uh, shirt. No, that's real. That's real. And I think, I, I think you know, you just, you just call Dan Algiers a culture vulture pretty much. Easy. <laughs> I'm just telling you, I met the yeah, guy. But, but let me tell you why, though. Y'all think I'm tripping, but judge this. I'm out there selling t shirts, my nigga. I could have dropped all that CD t shirt shit and went and hit the block in PA and got me up. Uh, 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 you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah. And, and, and came up. But I say, I'm going to use this opportunity because God gave me some chances. 
that I could have got blamed, you know, could have got accessory to murder. I never talked about none of that. Mm-hmm. And, and it's all concrete facts. Yeah. So when I had these products and people were buying them and they were like a real income, I said, man, I'm going to stick to this. I'm not going to risk my life. Mm-hmm. I got these young kids. I'm going to do it the humble way, rock for rock, like Master P, like like Tech Nine, like all these other cats that went out there and, and the Slim Thugs, the Two Shorts that yeah, popped yeah. the trunk, yeah. the Pimpin' Kins, yeah. you know, all these people. So I said, I'm going to do it. The Point Blanks, the Mike Moe's. Uh, all them boys out of Houston popping trunk, selling CD, boom, boom. So I said I was going to do that. Yeah. So Bun seen how hard I was going. So I said, Bun, look, I could use some momentum. I want to spend X amount of dollars, but I want to get some of the UGK shirts that the nigga actually used to send to us for free. But now since Pimp gone, the yeah, phone ain't, yeah, the phone yeah, ain't being answered. No the nigga giving me a wholesale price that's damn near retail. You know what I mean? So I say, Bun, I need to get a boatload of these shits because everybody is buying this shit from me. I'm selling Greedy Genius shoes. Shout out to uh my partner that was doing the Greedy Genius. Man, your name uh, uh erasing my mind right now, but you know who you greedy are. Greedy Genius. Yeah, them Greedy mm-hmm. Genius. Them, 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 them uh, exotic ass shoes. Nobody had them. I sell them all like motherfucker. So I want to get a boatload of these shirts. What's your record? Don't stop right there. How much, you, how much you sell in a week? Uh, you know, my record thirty five thousand in three days. God damn, what you had? I'm a hustle. You had that work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, this was close. close. Yeah. but I had built it up going to different stores. I was wholesaling too, and I was hitting the streets hard. My, and my, this was uh, right before Christmas, and it was probably in oh, oh eight. My mine varied because we were able to do the merchandise. Um, on the tables at the car shows. Okay, no, I never did. Nothing. We were able to do. The I was concerts. at people's houses. I was at first when I first started. Like people used to call me, and I remember I went by myself and yeah, me too. Uh, this chick, she was, she seen I was occupied, and she was like, "Yeah, I like that." She went she to was folding up shirts and yeah, stuff. I, 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 do, do me like that. <laughs> I seen her right. No, I had a guy. I'm still entertaining everybody. Yeah, that's ten. That's fifteen. Hey, bitch, take that up. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, did, I, did, I had a dude that stole some. You remember them clear Nikes? Oh yeah, them them, them clear your forces. Your feet be sweating Whack a little bit shit. through them. <laughs> yeah, nigga, I sold them. Man, for thirty five dollars a pair, I was, wow! I was getting them for about. I ain't telling you niggas. I don't want you niggas mad. At nigga, I was getting that. them. Hold, I was getting them hoes for the twink. I was getting them for lower than that. Whoa! I bought a whole our garage was full of them. Wasn't it? You must you got them hoes from China. Oh, I got them for my partner, dog. And <laughs> hey, listen, man. Hey, man. I, I sold them shoes so much, but it was one dude who stole a pair of my shoes. Dirty and they bounce. were thirty five dollars. So I, I I I turned around, I looked at him, and I said, "You ain't paying for them shoes, nigga. I need my money for them shoes." Yeah, nigga. He was man. I paid you. I said, "Nigga, I got all these twenties, nigga. Ain't no five in here nowhere." So I know you ain't gave me no money. Right. And, and it was about like you said, about ten, fifteen people around. Nigga didn't get my money either. So I was telling mess dealing with my people. What if I tell you about a week? Maybe about no, about a month later. I was sitting there selling my shoes, but minding my business. This nigga jump on a motorcycle, ying, 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 right in front of me, man. Bust his head wide open, right in front of me. God, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> I can write it in Marshall, man. So, well, it, well, hey. Let me, let me get, let me clear this up and I'm going to get off of Dan back. So, <laughs> no, nah, I got to say it because you got to say Go why, ahead. Why you got so much ambition and passion about Dan out here? No, no, I get it. So, Bun, I need to get this here. I'm going I'm to spend X, Y, and Z, boatload of shit. Bun, like, yeah, man, it's good. Tell him I said you can get it. I ain't thinking nothing of it. I'm hey, hey, uh Damn. Man, yeah, let me get uh let me get, you know what I'm saying, such and such dozen, boom, 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 boom. Why would I do that? He's a Leo. I'm like, nah, nah, nah. Bun said it's good, you know what I'm saying? You could call him and verify. Man, I'm not gonna take food off a of Bun's table. I say, dude, you tripping. Bun rich, nigga. I'm out here, you know what I'm saying? Trying to get to it. Yeah, a part of this big ass motherfucking a uh, 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 brand, but I'm in the hood, you know what I mean, amongst the, the, the killers and the thugs, the rest, the roaches. He pretty much didn't acknowledge you in the, in the, in the, the fact that y'all was built up together. Yeah. That's what he does. So he here's, here's the killer. Well, but let's get Bun on the phone. I'm thinking maybe he just need to hear from Bun. Bun, get on the phone. Uh, you know how you talk. Yeah, it's the big Bun Beatles say, man, let, uh, let Heezy get whatever he want, man. I said it was good. Bun, I don't want to take food off for your table. So he's lying. He telling Bun why Bun on the phone with me that he don't want to take food off a of Bun's table to sell me some shit for a, a better wholesale price. Like, I'm not asking for the shit free. Yeah. And I just, I say, hey, man, you know what? Fuck it. Stick them in your ass. Wow. And I never wore them hoes again. And if you notice, every time you see me, I got on that motherfucking trill gear, trill gang. I've been doing that shit for years. No, no, no. That's good, man. 
Um, let me let me ask you this, man. So let's get back on 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 the whole movement. The the, the whole anybody thing. else? I need to say fuck because I'm finished. no 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 no. We we don't let them make it. So fuck let, them two haters no, that been on my YouTube. No no you you basically uh, you saying enough on YouTube right now? You wide open. I'm on doing that all YouTube. the talking. You, you, know, you, you set your camera up. I said there you go. Because yeah, at first I was just quiet. I was thinking that niggas was gonna tell my narrative. Yeah. When you so when you do so much trill shit and real shit, you be like, oh that they gonna talk about my narrative, and you go do some more real shit. But then years pass and you hear crickets. Crickets over there whispering, and nigga, he's a Leo a trio, nigga. No, bitch, you got to put a microphone and the megaphone on that. Oh, they need to tell the world. I'm trying to say a little trio. Hey, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, I Come get on it. So it. let me ask you, so, so Bun, I, I heard Bun in the, when, when somebody broke in his house and then his old lady was in there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a real situation. Yeah. Did you, you you and him ever talk about that or come into any contact about it? You say, hey, man, I hate that happen. Or you oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Most definitely that and, and appreciate you, my nigga. But I understand the position. But you knew that could go down like that too, being in all the time, all yeah. the time. Man, we from we, you know, we from. Come yeah, on, yeah, man. yeah, yeah, yeah. We from the hood for real. Yeah, yeah, they watching. Yeah, yeah. But I don't, I don't like try to bother bun with a bunch of small. Talk yeah, 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 yeah. Because I've so it gotta actually, be some, some real. Yeah, okay. I've actually lived how they lived for for a couple of years straight, and I've seen how much of the world is coming at them. Yeah. Plus, they 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 personal people, their friends, their family, all the people on the internet. Man, that's a lot. Yeah. And you've done this for 20, 30 years. Can yeah. you imagine just being in demand for 20, 30 years with hundreds of thousands of people? Hey, give me this. That shit can run you crazy. crazy. I had to decompress after things slowed down. I had to actually kind of hide from society, be by myself, and get my fucking mind right because, not saying common people, but when you live in this boss talk shit, this big dream shit, you can't go communicate with chickens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because a lot of times it's going to be way more chickens than it is eagles. That's it. So you might have some some compassion for them chickens one day and be like, yeah, I'm up there sore and picking up foxes and eating two foxes a day. Chicken's like, oh, because bitch, bitch, that nigga, I ate a worm and a rat. Oh, because bitch, that nigga lied. That nigga lied. <laughs> so do you, do you, let me ask you, so do you think that, uh, what? how do you like the music that's going on right now? Um... I'm stumped. Who you, who you listening to? I ain't listening to nobody. Oh, that nigga that went home on the show. No, no, no. Let the young nigga make it. No, no, I'm going to be honest. You birthed some of these I'm niggas. I'm going to be honest. You know what I'm saying? These young you know niggas then twisted the game and, and, and got it on lock. But y'all birthed them. We birthed them. Oh, oh, got it. I got you. I hey, got you. Like, like, I'm going to tell you who I like. I like uh, Moneybag Yo. Okay. And I like uh, Little Baby. Not the baby or a baby or them babies. I like little baby. <laughs> the nigga flow is so, so rambunctious, he got me stumped. Like, I researched niggas from, you know, the 80s and everybody, the 90s, 2000, boom, 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 up until the day. And I could follow their flow pattern. I can mimic it. But I cannot mimic that nigga flow pattern. I don't understand it. Can I go to school and learn that shit? <laughs> hey man, they got a thing going, don't you? Nigga jamming. <laughs> so what? What do you? So so the process of the music, because you still doing music. How is it dealing with streaming versus you've seen it both ways? Um, uh, as it elevated, what do you? What? How did that affect you? Did it? You know how a nigga get hit with a blow? Did you have to stop, step back, and say, "Hey, okay, it's doing it this way." You ain't see me under that bridge on <laughs> six thirty five. <laughs> you, you know I'm telling the truth because it, it shook some niggas, man. But, I talked to I talked to Low D the other night. He was like, "Yeah, man, I couldn't, I couldn't." You know, he, with Yella, he he, he Yella beats the manager. He like, I understand now, you know. But when I was doing it, I couldn't. I couldn't transfer over into it like he I was should. in the streets like me. He was, exactly. He was in the streets pushing music, yeah. this and that, this and that. Yeah. I sensed it coming uh, because as you out there taking the temperature of the streets, you got people saying, "Well, well, I ain't got no money, but on my card." Yeah. Cash App wasn't even in yet. No, it wasn't. Uh, well, I uh, I got a brand new car. I only got a USB. <laughs> like so, things started changing, yeah, and, I'm, and I'm taking it notes. Did. And I'm like, okay, these CDs. And then you got people on air to my CD is going to be extinct. Shut the fuck up. Them all don't need to be extinct. I need to be out here. <laughs> so when it started shifting, I told Mama where she was still alive. I said, Mama, um, if we don't lock, because we had a little situation where Spice One was going to come get down with us and we was going to broker a couple of little deals for, you know, a few of us. But that didn't go through. So when that didn't go through, I was like, Mama, I'm going to have to find something to go along with this if we don't lock nothing down. All right, Peter, Mama West. Mm -hmm. So I started researching uh, trucking. So 2015, 
Um, I seen that, you know, the CD sales had really, really slowed down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. The streams was half a pennies and pennies, and you know what I mean? That it really wasn't nothing to be nothing thinking to be, about. No. So People I still was stunned, it. though, like they were really getting it. Well, the <laughs> ones who have that that great following on the Internet, yeah, they can they can turn that into some some bread. They can turn that into an income. But an underground nigga who's, you know, getting a few hundred this and that, this and that, that whole uh, guerrilla market and street campaign is what kept boys afloat. Okay. So I just basically had to reinvent myself as the game changed. Okay. And that's, that's, that's what's up with it, but you still here. A lot of your homeboys ain't here no more, period. Some of them dead and gone. You know, some of them ain't in. Some ain't, ain't even in the music no more. They couldn't deal with it. Depressed. I talked to a nigga the other day from GS5. Uh, one of the members. He was. He still stuck. Like he want to be celebrity status. He can't get past what Young Jock did to him. You know? <laughs> he, he can't get past being pushed in the back, and he couldn't, couldn't get be seen. You know, like that. It really messed with some of these people, man. You gotta be uh, a survivor and a hustler. Uh, it got to be in you. You'll you you keep recreating yourself. They close this door, you're going to figure out how to get your foot in that one. Yeah. Um, I knew one thing, though. Once it all lock up, once all the whip lock up, it's going to land right. Because right now, I own almost 100% of everything I got, every song, this and that, this and that. Now, the songs that I feature on with Pimp on Pimp Projects, uh, that was almost one of them things like, uh, go ahead and donate this to the state. Yeah. You know what I mean? So those songs, no, I don't make no money off them, but it gave me some promotions. You know what I mean? Those projects probably been sold, um, I'll say at a minimum, 200,000 copies a piece or something like that, but it's probably way more. I just stopped looking for it. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? But I know it was good promotion. People who didn't knew, know about me, they was able to hear uh, the voice, see the name. So I didn't, I didn't trip on that. But everything else, every download, every stream, it's all in place now. So the more traffic I'm starting to get now, I'm about to be one of the young niggas to give me some tight oh, jeans. Oh, yeah, you better get it in, man. <laughs> and, and, and talk about this streaming shit. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck some so, streaming so, so, well, give me give me a crazy incident with you and with you and Pimp C, because you've been everywhere with him. You've seen some crazy stuff happen with the Pimp. I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you, okay, I'm going to give you a choice. I want, you know, because Mike Jones came on here, he told me a story about when they did it, the, because I was, I was on that smoking out pulling up, I was like, nigga, what happened that day? Nigga, you look like you were having a and good time. And he told us And he told us about the car. The he car. wrecked the car and wrecked the Bentley and, and, and some more stuff that I never would have knew. That's a perfect one to give you. I, I was going to give you a choice of two. They beautiful. But since you said that, I'm going to give you the backstory of the Mike Jones situation. Okay. Okay. Mike Jones come out to the hood and, and he, he, he chilling. We on Short Texas. Okay. If anybody know anything about Port Arthur, Short Texas is like... That that stage like the boys had in New York when everybody was out there getting it. Yeah, 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 that's, yeah. That's, that's like being in Manhattan and you out there yeah. with the boys in Manhattan. Pocket full of stone, you know. Oh what I'm yeah, saying? yeah, yeah. Police and and prostitution and pimping and hustling everything. and aiming, everything under the sun. We those, but we don't close. But okay, this has been turned into a whole different area now. A bunch of businesses didn't close, and we out there shooting a video, which was very epic. So Mike Jones pull up, you know what I'm saying? He get out. And you know, Mike Jones kind of, you know, he's kind of nervous and yeah, shit. Yeah, of course. He talking to everybody. Hey man, you wanna hear my new mix? Nigga, you don't fuck with me, but I'll come listen, what's up? So we, he let me hear some new music and shit. We walking around doing our thing. Pimp get out there, boom, boom, boom. So Pimp tell me, throughout the video, I've been trying to give you these certain cameos, but I didn't give them to you, which I appear in the video a couple of little times, you yeah. know what I'm saying? But not just that flush shot where you can see, oh, that's easy. So he said, we didn't plan this. We was we was dressed alike. We both had on a maroon dicky suit. Okay, you know. I remember that. I remember that. I suit. remember yeah. those. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and he had the, the 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 model vixen, the video vixen, Esther Baxter there to appear in the video. So from Houston, which is a whole another story, she was in the trailer and she came out, and the nigga was like, "Who told the bitch to come out the trailer?" <laughs> And she come out all make up, up and dolled up, looking good. I'm like, man, hold up. He say, but I didn't tell the bitch to come out the trailer. Get back in the trailer. So she didn't get her cameo or play her part that day. So here we is in PA, this and that. She in the trailer again. 
getting paid to get dolled up. Hey, she bust an easy lick. That day, <laughs> all, hey, all weekend long, she bust up licks, you know what I'm saying, doing nothing but looking pretty. So she's sitting in the trailer doing her thing. We out down short Texas. The sun is out. The police out. They got a dead dog over there. But that was in Houston. The old yellow was dead right by the barbecue pit. But niggas was still eating the food. But we're now we're back in Port Arthur. So Mike Jones, he talking to the little kids and shit. He's shivering and shaking. The little kids ain't going to bite you, nigga. Calm down. You know what I'm saying? So Mike was out here. Yeah, he's legit. But he had a van. Hey, now don't get me wrong. I'm just talking shit because I'm lighthearted. He had a van of niggas over there that was okay. ready to, you okay. know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, yeah, Mike yeah. Jones, they were ready to 281. They were with him. They were with him. Yeah, yeah, they were at 330, nigga, <laughs> in the 49. But them niggas were probably going to receive some gunfire. <laughs> so here it is. We right there. We on the scene doing our thing. Boom, boom, boom. So Pimp them wrap up. They do that thing. The Pimp like, damn, my nigga, I ain't give you your cameo. I'm like, man, it's good, whatever, whatever. He said, well, look, me and Mike Jones got to go. We got to catch a plane to go do something with Brooke Valentine or whatever. He said, I'm going to leave you the candy red drop. So the candy red L dog. Yeah, yeah, that's the one Chameleon gave him. Chameleon gave me the drop. She was already a star. You know what I'm saying? That's it. So the car sitting right there. I got on the dicky suit pimp like, yeah. See, niggas going to think it's me in there, but it's going to be you. <laughs> and because the model chick didn't get her cameo, you going to get in the car with you. I said, you going to do that for me, man. <laughs> you didn't touch my heart. Come on now, get this bitch in this car so we get this shit popping. It's old. So pimp them pull off. Him and Mike Jones them pull off. And, and, and brother-in-law, Riley B, that's my nigga, he out there like, why Pip gave you the car? I'm like, fuck all that, nigga. Just get out of <laughs> the way. Going, get, the, get, yeah. get it going. So now I'm supposed to be getting a cameo and acting, but now I'm damn near telling the director what to do. Get them camera, turn them hoes right there, nigga. I'm finna get in this whip, and I'm finna pull out banging with this up. So I get in the whip, they finna call the chick, and I'm just saying, like, ooh, here's my chance. Yeah, yeah, I'm finna the get in. The whole world about to see me smoking, pouring up, keeping lean up in my oh, car. Oh. And all of a sudden, nigga, I heard the police say, Six four one nine, shots fired. MC's oh. direction. Oh, I'm like, what the fuck? So I'm like, dog, fuck all that, man. Fuck them cameras. Come on, Riley B. Riley B. Hops in the um, candy red drop with me. We smash through the crowd through the barricade. And I know exactly what a, where it then took place because yeah. I'm a PA nigga. Yeah. I can walk around PA with my eyes closed, yes touching sir. shit, yes telling sir. you, oh, that's the car wash. I'm the same way in the country. Yeah, Easy. I get it. So we smashed the Guffway next to the 7 Eleven, and we see the damn gray Bentley smashed up with the, 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 the tire falling off that hole. We see seven foot of the big bodyguard here on the damn stretcher. And I'm like, man, we'll pimp it. I see Mike Jones, he didn't took off all his jury. <laughs> <laughs> well, he might as well. He might as well. So much shit going on. You don't want to be looking at the devil tongue. Take that shit off, nigga, for one of these hungry ass niggas. Turn into a wolf and jack your shit and run back to the projects. Yeah, that's the biggest lick I ever had. Fuck that nigga. We're going to take the diamonds. You know what I mean? So he came back and his white tee looking like a regular nigga, Mike Jones. So when we get over there, I'm talking to Amalans. I'm like, what pimp? And pimp over there talking to Amalans. He good. Yeah. I'm like, my nigga, you good? You good? He like, yeah, man, I'm good, man. This and that, this and that, man. In the fucked up, boom, 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 this and that, this and that. He said, I'm glad you bought the candy red. So me and him, after everything kind of calmed down, we hops in the candy red drop and we drive to the hospital. Now, we, before we drove to the hospital, it was a nigga. I remember the nigga face. The nigga standing on the side talking about, <laughs> ah, pimp, since you didn't wreck that Bentley, nigga, give me the rims off that hose. I say, shut up, bitch ass nigga. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you see this man already going through some shit and you yeah, want to play? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I start raising out the drop he top out the car. He want that smoke. Nah, nah. Pimp say, look, my nigga, calm down. He say, nigga, we finna go through all kind of shit like that. He say, you gonna have to remain calm through type of shit like that. Yeah. But I'm from PA. Like, I'm used to, you disrespect me, okay, boo? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But he told you it wasn't even, his timing wasn't right. Yeah, because I was in a whole different arena now. Now I'm, yeah. now I'm this rapper. Yeah, 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 yeah. But I'm still this street nigga. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> With a hundred bouts up under my belt. Bitch ass nigga, you ain't gonna disrespect me. You ain't about to disrespect the motherfucking pimp. So that's it. That's it. We shot to the hospital, you know what I'm saying? And, and pimp dad pulled up to the hospital. And I seen him like, son, you all right? Because I had never seen him really interact. Yeah. And it, and it touched my soul. That's what's you up. You know what I'm saying? Then pimp walks into the hospital. And I'm in the candy red drop outside. And I'm like, man, I'm glad my nigga all right. Then fans start pulling up and shit, and I went to selling CDs. God forgive me. <laughs> Lord forgive me. Pimp forgive no, me. No, I had no, to pop that trunk. It is, man. <laughs> hey, the circles was on, nigga. The candy red drop sitting there pretty ready for the uh, video shoot. Niggas didn't follow us, nigga. I made them niggas form a line like they was at a burger joint. Yes, sir. Might as well, man. So you when you first heard uh Tell Me Something Good and all them songs, did you know that it was it was gonna take off like it did? 
I had an idea because I've always been blessed as a young child. Ever since a little child, my ears was in tune to quality music. And back then, only kind of quality shit was coming out were from major people. Like, you were doing your thing, but you was in the closet rapping through a can, and it sounded like it. So Pimp was so meticulous about his sound. Here's this tell me something good with this beautiful sampled arrangement, the verses. It was nothing like it at that time. And ever. So when when we locally heard it, we was, man, we was excited. Yeah, I remember Jay Prince said he jumped in the car when he heard the album just drove to Port Arthur. You know what I, I mean? I used mean? to get some of their demo tapes, like, uh, unreleased stuff and, and I'd be in my room like checking it out like okay that's 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 what's up it, it wasn't as, as clear as you know the, the later stuff they started putting out but like DMD and all those cats they would come to the hood first and test their music so we, we used to be able to get demo tapes from them this and that this and that so Tell Me Something Good definitely was one of those like yeah this shit gonna do something man that was my song that's what that's what took, took me off that was one of the first ones that I really just gravitated to and I was like that's my that's my banger right there oh really yeah and, and his voice was different man so yeah it was different and he say he embraced it after a while but at first he didn't you know that's what made him stand out yeah 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 so the, the beats part you have you I know you because KLC talked about him processing the beats mm -hmm. how was that learning curve for him when he was doing that since you was from the beginning you seen it um because he came off like you know he was doing the beats too that's what I always tell my wife yeah he was he was a dope producer um I never was really in the studio when okay. he was making certain beats okay because when he got out of prison he was making up for lost time so he was dealing with different producers and different engineers. Yeah, I was and talking he, about that first when he first started doing it. Oh yeah, they 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 were at uh, Mama West house and he would have all his equipment. Back then, I wasn't the type of friend that can show up. You yeah, know yeah, I mean? yeah, 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 yeah. I knew them, but it wasn't like what? I just show up and knock on the door. I remember one time I went over there, it was rumored them, them niggas used to smoke big mounds of weed. <laughs> yeah. And I'm just a PA nigga trying to get my smoke on. And I'm in them <laughs> niggas hood fucking with a nap bed at bitch. Yeah. So I'll run over there and knock on the door uninvited and shit. And pimp like, man, who is that? <laughs> <laughs> them niggas look at this shit. Uh, one nigga, I think DJ Bird or Bum was like, oh man, that, that nigga heard this nigga. He like, y'all know that nigga? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we know him. Man, get that nigga ass away from here. We don't know what type of shit he on. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm out there, must have been walking around with a tank top on, probably drunk, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm just trying to smoke. I'm trying to roach up on some smoking. So Bun came out, he smoking something. I'm like, Y'all doing, my nigga? You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to look all off in that bun like, uh, shit, you want to hit the wheel? I'm like, yeah, I hit the wheel. Yeah, nigga, come in. No, nah, man, we we doing something. But shit, I did. <laughs> <laughs> we doing, we don't want you in here. <laughs> On some retarded shit. So, so basically, so so the- Dumb way. <laughs> was, you, was you close to the pimp or were you close to the bun when that relationship was going on? Because you got, you know, you got, you have the one you closer to. Well, the reality of it is this. I wound up doing more music business with Pimp when he came home because I was managed by his mama years prior. Okay. But Bun, if you look at our earlier videos, we got a, a song called Do The Show Stop Up, Drop Your Body On The Flow. It was my homeboy song. <laughs> it's a girl song. Girls loved it. We had a good time. The whole city came out and we talked to Bun. We was doing a TV show in Houston. We're like, Bun, man, we doing it, man. You need to come on down and fool with us. You know what I'm saying? And just on the strength, Bun showed up and, and stayed all throughout the video, shoot the pool scenes. And if you go look at the video, you see Bun and them embracing us like, you know. Yeah. And he told us that day, if y'all stay out there more doing y'all thing, it's easier for me to connect with y'all and help y'all. Yeah. So me and Bun always had a relationship. You know what I mean? I didn't have much of a relationship with Pimp because he was he was kind of like a studio lab rat. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Bun was kind of in the streets. I remember being in the club one night. We didn't know smoking. It wasn't them after hour club. You ain't, you know, if you a pussy nigga, you ain't supposed to be in there, boy. Yeah, 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 Bartender yeah. Bartender slap your ass. So Bun them sitting in the corner and shit, and they kind of ducked off, and they, they looking evil. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I know them, so I go back there like, what's up, nigga? I hit the chocolate time. I'm like, God damn, where y'all got that from? You know what I'm saying? It's it good. Strong. So Bun like, nah, nigga, it's plexed up. Me and this nigga, this and that, this and that. And I'm like, damn, Bun, you you doing your music. I really didn't want him getting in no shit. Yeah. But I ain't know all the logistics of it. So I smoked the dope and I watched the strippers and I got my ass out of there. But I would see Bun in, you know, different areas was, like that. Yeah. But I wind up when Pimp got out, he was gonna start the UGK record thing. I didn't even know. Like I was just, you know, his mom was managing me. Uh when he got out, he embraced me. I was at his house the day he got out. 
So he embraced you said, me. You, you had been writing him when he was locked up? Or? No. I, nobody I, wrote him? Who wrote him? Some damn body wrote yeah, him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He some was on people, the tarot unit. I know where he was at. Yeah, some people was writing him, but it's like I wasn't trying to build no instant fake-ass relationship. But you knew him before that, though. Yeah, but, but we were not like that. I yeah, we it. wasn't cool. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? We was, we was cordial. You know what I mean? When I seen him, I saluted him. But I never was trying to like get all in his his company like yeah, that. Yeah, so yeah. when his mama had sent for me to manage me, I never pursued them. Like his his brother in law came caught me on the corner of Guffway and Memorial selling my CDs. Mm -hmm. Like when I told you the dude couldn't give me the distribution deal. Yeah. So I'm on the corner in the high sun selling my CDs, and he come and introduced me to Pimp Mama. Boom, boom, boom. So uh, Pimp get out, and he start formulating the UGK record thing. Okay. And so I told him I was doing a mixtape during the time. And this mixtape was going to be hosted by DJ Smalls. Niggas okay. think DJ Small eyes is like somebody new. Now, DJ Smalls used to be doing mixtapes back yeah, in the day. I heard his name. And he was going to put out my mixtape. But that's a whole nother trio story. Y'all got to come to YouTube to get that. But, oh, man. <laughs> that YouTube, we got that YouTube wide right over there. And, and it's, it's growing. He's a Leo. H-E-Z-E-L-E-O. That's how y'all do everything. He's a Leo. Every, so, every social site. He's a Leo. <laughs> so Pimp start the UGK record thing. <clears throat> He see how hard I went for his mama. And the day he get out, he got I got a show with Camellia now. I was on a mini tour with Camellia now. And this is one of the last dates. So he like, man, when you see Cam, tell him uh, I want that candy red drop. So I, I put it, I put Cam and Pimp on the phone with that. And so when he started the whole UGK record thing, you know, after that, he seen how hard I was going. He seen that I was a hell of a rapper, but I ain't had no good beats. But I was spread it so thin. So I was on his team. You know what I mean? I was on his team with the merchandise. I was on his team with the artistry. I was on his team with the whole just personal life, the barbecues, this and that, this and that. But it was always a mutual love for Bun. I'm not one of them niggas because I'm over here fucking with Pimp. Uh, fuck Bun. No, I'm a fight hard for Bun and I'm a fight hard for Pimp. It's yeah. a peculiar situation to be in, but it's some pot off the ass shit. Yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, I get it. So now, uh, I was over there working with uh, Pimp. But it was always love for the both of them. I, I was down with the UGK, the Underground Kings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Pimp you see, I know. Always, I always liked the way Pimp and them rolled because I looked at, even when they had did that with Jay, you know, I'm, I'm from, I told you to tell me something good. So I've been rolling with them before all of that Again, happened. Yeah. So when I when I looked and, uh, and I seen how Pimp was on that, you know, I remember he come out and said, Bun kept saying he didn't really want to do that. That song with uh Jay Z. With Jay Z. Yeah. But then I seen how he then Too Short told a story about how they wasn't even with them. They went down to the beach and just did they scene on the beach. Yeah. And which was crazy. You know what I mean? So but everybody kinda at that time kind of felt like Jay Z discovered but UGK uh, because up on the East Coast, I'm telling you, this mm -hmm. is what they was thinking because of how wide of a range of people that he connected with. So I think Pimp was kind of, it seemed as if he was standoffish from that whole situation at times. You he, know? Didn't, he didn't want to water down what he worked so hard to build. Yeah. And he thought like that commercial type record would just make them look like these other people reaching well, for Well, you did Underground Kings. Yeah. And he was serious about that. And, and a lot of times, like, I was able to break new fans by the big, pink, big pimping record. Yeah, 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 <clears> for <throat> sure. Like, I would talk about the records that we know. And they'd be like, I ain't never heard of that. Three in the morning. Yeah, then I'd be like, well, you, you heard of Big Pimpin', right? Nigga. Oh, yeah, Big Pimpin'. Well, yeah, sell a CD. Okay, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, so it was a selling, it was a, it was a selling strategy, right? Yeah. Marketing point. Yeah, so. Yeah. So it worked out. I've always I've always been one of them dudes, like, if, if, if Pimp wanted to say something about Bun, I'd be looking at him like, for real? Uh-huh. Whatever. <laughs> <laughs> I get it, because they're brothers. I can't even hear it. Yeah, right. I, I'm, I got brothers, right? And you never pick a side with brothers because... My brother may be mad at me, but you go over there and, and start shoo shooing with him about me, talking about, yeah, man, fuck that, that nigga. That, now yeah. he looking at you like, okay, nigga. You know what I mean? Yeah. Now he about to turn on you. Exactly. I know that. But see, it, it takes niggas with common sense and who have brothers to understand that. You don't go stand against other brothers with brothers. You, know? you that's, can't do that. They business. Them boys been down with each other. Before I had anything to do with it, I don't, hey, look, that's their business. That's and exactly I, how I stayed I out done of there. Exactly how I would have done it as well. So let me ask you this, man. Top three artists of all time. Top three all time. Dead or alive, alive any, any genre. genre. So just three. Uh, Picasso. Nah, let me quit. Oh, uh, <laughs> I like, I like, uh, let me see. Dead or alive. Man, there's so many, man. I got to go with Pimp C. That's okay. my nigga. See, that's why he on the I show. I got to go with Pimp C. Yeah, that's a Pimp C show. You uh, niggas going to get it. Let me see. Let me see. 
Damn, I don't want to be no old nigga revealing my age. Uh, Tupac. Oh, <laughs> you going with Tupac? Hell yeah. Oh, you, that, nigga, everybody, everybody got some old, so yeah, some old you know, knockoff listen, tattoo. Well, plus Tupac. Yeah, one, yeah, yeah, for sure. Let, let me say this. Uh, Two Shot said the reason that Pimp didn't want to do that song was because of Tupac. Yeah. He said, I don't know if he know the nigga or what, but the nigga he just, just loved what Tupac stood for. Yeah. Th- it, that was a part of him not wanting to do the song, is what he said. It came back to me when you said that. Exactly. I've seen that lately, too. Yeah, i seen Too Short said that. He said, he, he said, man, I don't know if he even knew too, t- Tupac, <laughs> but he say, hell, he just was like, I, you know, he ain't doing it. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, so the greatest, all right. Number three. Number three. I'm going to funk y'all head up. Oh, man. Let's see what he going to come up with. You know, Lil three. Wayne. Oh, for real? Lil Wayne? Man, you ever seen Lil Wayne live? I've seen Lil Wayne in person. I've never seen him perform, but I've seen him, like, been in the room with Who's him. Who's seen Lil Wayne live? Nobody. Crickets. <laughs> I've seen Lil Wayne live. <laughs> now, look. Nigga, Lil Wayne is the James Brown of, of rap. That little motherfucker leave it all on the stage, man. That boy be drenched in sweat. That boy jump off the microphone and go jump on the drums and start playing the drums. That boy go grab a guitar and start playing the guitar. The boy go grab a motherfucking trombone and start playing. Nah, nah, I'm lying. (laughs) But I seen that nigga, man. I seen that nigga perform for about two hours, man. And, And when that kid got off that stage... They wrapped that cape around him like James Brown, man. He was sweating profusely, and, and, and it looked like he was exhausted. Wow. I ain't never seen no other artist. Man, most rap niggas, excuse me, man, grab they, you know what I'm saying, rap, yeah. walk back and forth with the music playing in the background and shit. <laughs> nigga thinking to himself, boy, I'm making easy money. <laughs> <laughs> Performance-wise, music, con- uh, consistency, mixtape after mixtape, lyrical content, man, Lil Wayne, a bad mother, shut your mouth. Oh, you're a bad boy. Man. So, let me ask you this. Uh, it, back in the day, I got to get this in. Uh, a guy coming from Port Arthur, you know what I'm saying? If if you could go back and speak to that guy that was was out there knocking on Pimp Nim Doe, I don't know how old you was at the time, what would you tell you? Get your ass off the people, Port Arthur. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck wrong with you. <laughs> what would you, you? If you could have an in-depth conversation to give him something to take him, you know, to the future where he was about to go. I'm, I would have put him in the car and went and bought him a fall downs and told him, man, you, you don't do that, man. You know. Yeah, it's a way to do things. Yeah. And, and, and I was just so, such a Port Arthur dude. That's just how we rocked. Yeah. Like, I knew some some known jackers. But at this time, I got a little baby and a baby mama. And we know I, we know each other, you know. But these niggas just show up to my house one day. I went on and opened up the door, you know, me and that 4 5. Yeah. And I invited them in for a drink of water because they were walking. And I heard they spill. But then I told them with a straight face, say, my nigga, don't ever come to my house no more. Wow. When you see me, see me in the street. Yeah. And they were like, huh? Nah, nah, I'm just saying, for real. See me in the street. And I walked them out. Certain niggas you just don't let come to your house. That's exactly right. Fuck wrong with you. No, that's the truth. <laughs> you let the devil, don't let the devil in. <laughs> Boy, you been preaching, but it been around a lot of preachers, ain't it? Man, all my uncles <laughs> and grandpa, I grew up in the Baptist church with, with the parade soda waters and the fried chicken and then tea cakes. So how you how you plan to spend this YouTube off? I know you're trying to get it going. I see you on there. Are you working? Um, you didn't monetize. Hey! <laughs> hey! Yeah. You done monetized. Man, I was shooting for them 4,000 hours working at home. Coming yeah, there, yeah, yeah. Coming there, driving, there, making too. content, just, just, just working. And that bitch hit the little 4,000. I'm like, oh my God, they did it. Then all of a sudden, that it thing started impact. jumping and jumping and jumping. Man, I got to getting on that thing talking about some of everybody. <laughs> Dr. Umar Johnson and Kevin Samuels. <laughs> oh, that's the ones you got to get at. If you can get their attention, they, it's going gonna, it's gonna to run it Y'all up. Y'all seen what Floyd Mayweather did? Yeah. <laughs> I think that's what your boy. That's what your boy trying to do too. Who that? That seventeen guy. He's, he's trying to do the same thing. Well, he he did what he did. He jumped out there with a whole hate campaign, but now he uh, 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 got uh, what they call that uh, when you didn't lost the, the memory. You got yeah. uh, amnesia. Amnesia. He now he on there acting like Gizmo talking about. Yeah, man, because we got to chill out. And, and I the seen the golfer wanted to jump. Nigga, you were just talking about fuck everybody on it. <laughs> it's bipolar. You yeah, said it. Yeah, but 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 I I. I'm, I'm gonna get off that campaign because he once was a brother. He y'all did a lot of good work together, it seems. And we got some unreleased stuff. Really? Yeah, but it's just, man, I want niggas to judge me for me. 
Yeah, yeah. Don't judge me because of my partner. Now, if I'm really down with that nigga, I don't care what he do. Yeah, judge but me. But you yeah. didn't really, y'all didn't come up together. No, nothing. no. Yeah, you from Mississippi. We you? just we just started doing music together. Through, because of Pimp? Yeah, through Pimp. And we built the brotherhood, all that traveling, this and that, being at each other's house, eating this and that. He got to see me in Ralph form. We we leave uh, South by Southwest. And, and I am I got the, uh, the flu. I didn't came home. Nigga didn't call my mama a bitch. Wow. Yeah, and nigga live across the street. Oh, man. And, and my mama ain't want to tell me, but my sister like, man, them niggas out there, about five, six, seven of them. Nigga, I drove over there and stomped the, stomped the brakes when I stopped. Oh, motherfucking <laughs> motor fell out, nigga. I hopped out that bitch like a wild wood. Which one of you bitch? <laughs> 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 nigga, I'm on this year. <laughs> they ain't want no smoke. But I made one phone call just for if, you know. And all them niggas pulled up in 17 scene. When he when he seen me, I was a different humble person. That humbleness was out the window. Yes, it, was, it was gorilla soup time. Yeah, 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 yeah. He don't know that part. Hammer time. <laughs> he don't want to see that part no more either. We all got it in us. Already, when it comes to mama. We is mad. Mama gone now, but when she was here, yeah, you couldn't do that. No, a nigga tried to pull one on me and my mom. I took her home and jumped back in that lack and head back down there, nigga. And yeah, he go down like that. You... You 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 look for the code of how to trigger a black man. Mm -hmm. And you be punching all kind of code. Beep, 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 beep. Niggas still be looking at you all calm. Nigga, you punch that right code M O M. It's a problem. Boy, that's your ass, Mr. Postman. <laughs> <laughs> nigga ain't gonna let nobody mess with mama, is it? Turn up! <laughs> my mama make a nigga go back down there, man. Nigga, I die with my mama. My, my, my mama wind up past, man. Her birthday. You got anything for no, sir. her? Okay, birthday she quiet day, today. Boy. She know we over here having all the fun, <laughs> so she ain't even, that she usually gonna say something. Because she say, this nigga doing all the talking. No, no, no. We enjoy it, man. The fact, like I said, I love the history lesson, too, man. So what about the new music? Um, so what what's what's what you got out there now that I can look for and pull up? Did you hear any of the uh, any of the joints I sent you? No, I did not. You sent them too late. Don't I, try I to blame did. it on me. I, I did. had four interviews today, I and did. and you you got me. But I'm I, I'm glad I, I got them in my vault now. I did. Well, the new music that I'm putting out right now is gonna show the knowledge that I've always had, but didn't have the time to express in the studio. Because when you're trying to survive off of rap money for real. With that guerrilla marketing tactic and this and that and waiting on the shows and waiting on the features, man, you do a lot of working, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of legwork. Like you said, you met me in this area in the parking lot. Yeah, Come in on. the parking lot. I'm from 500 miles down away. Down there at the smoke shop. Yeah. So and I had the store here, but I was just walking down there and I seen you, and that's how we that's how we converse. So sometimes in the past, uh, my music suffered because I was trying to get some product to the streets. Uh, I had some good uh, engineers and producers later on, but. We wind up going our separate ways. So nowadays, with the knowledge I have of, of the rhythmic type sounds and, and, and the, the social commentary and just knowing how to jam is what you can expect from me now. Like I got I got the formula. You know what I mean? So that's what you can expect from me now. I'm dropping singles left and right, and they are phenomenal. I, I love the music I'm putting out right now. And I'm not by myself because now the newfound YouTube people some of the people who was looking for me who just stumbled back upon me and some of the new people, they are like, man, this is crazy. This is jamming. And they buying it left and right, man. I am so thankful. You bastards took long enough, but. <laughs> hey, listen, man. Also, man, you, you print me up some of them Trill shirts I can get them from you. So yeah, I can have. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a, I, I gotta have some. Like yeah, I said, I've been, and, and we gotta go with long T style too and big guy style because that's where Algiers did win at. With he had the six X's and the big, and we we can do something on that together. But we gotta have something because it was a guy just left mm -hmm. here wanted a big shirt, tall T, trying to get. I, I can do all that, but help me with this because this is what I was trying to do back in the day. I didn't do too many retail, but only on my manufactured products. Okay. So when I was able to uh, uh, offer a manufactured product that was you know manufactured from top to bottom with the stitch, the tags, this and that, this and that, I knew that that, that could be a retail product. The shirts that I do now are branded products, so they're not tagged Trill Gear, but they're printed Trill Gear. They're branded. Why can't we get them tagged Trill Gear? Um, because we can. Well, I need manufacturers. We we and, can figure that out. Oh, if if you can help me figure that out, we can figure that out. It's mm -hmm. very unfortunate because for years I knew people who knew the plugs. But they wouldn't give them to me. You didn't come back over after you sold me the CD. <laughs> no, I didn't know you had it. I didn't no, know no, you had no, it. No, I can figure it out. 
Okay. I ain't been in this this long for nothing. You know, we've been in this for now 16 years. Mm. We finna do this. Yeah, we'll figure it out. I, now, Cause I, I, I want to always be able to give something. And I always tell the boys I sell the shirts for now. We got to have that tag in it because we wanted to fish it. It's ours. You know? And that's why I kept it out of stores. I know, stores. I know. We're going to figure it out. And I made it come straight from the website. No, no, we're going to figure it out. It, it's been time. Yeah. Because when I did the manufacturer hat, <clears throat> the shit flew. Yeah. It, 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 it spread the wings and flew. You know what I mean? But that manufacturer is after COVID and started playing games. Nigga sent me a batch of hats look like some some, some <laughs> army hats. <laughs> hey, nigga sent me some hats. Them hoes all crooked to the side. The, 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 the damn tags on them whole buckles and shit. Man. It look, nigga look like a, a, a fake Al Jordan. The, the Jordan look pregnant on the shoe. Nah. <laughs> Say, man, whenever you get something, new music out or anybody, a new artist, because you may be helping that one young guy or something, that man, and he worth it, man. Mm -hmm. Send him my way so we can get him on the show. Especially, like I said, Tr Trilly Polk. You know Trilly Polk? Uh, I don't know him personally, but we from Port Arthur. He just was here. We've okay. engaged uh, online. We showed each other respect. Yeah, yeah. He's a real respectful dude, man. Yeah, yeah. Like when he came here, they drove down him and B Banks from Houston. But okay. he, he mentioned he was from Port Arthur, so you know I went PMC crazy. So. Well, look, uh, I got a I got a young son that's that's. Rich. Re retarded. What about Pimp C son? Dude? I'm finna tell you. Hold on. I got a young son, young Heezy, and young Pimp Corey. Them niggas be collabing all the time. It's just they been a little uh, uh, distracted by life. Yeah, of course. But mm -hmm. I'm a mentor in their life. Of and, course. And they do great music. We got <clears throat> some of their videos on my YouTube. Okay. You know what I mean? And I encourage them to to keep on going and, and doing music. But being young men without having uh, his uncles like the UGK Posse in the financial positions to be able to be in the studio and coach them and just show them, hey man, the do's and the don'ts, we've suffered with that. Of course. Because you know how it is when, when young men got idle time and they're amongst their peers, you got the blind leading the blind. For sure, and for I, sure. I'm, I'm hurt behind that, but they're young men, so. But at least you at least you are in their life and they will reach out to you if, if, they, if it's necessary, you know. Yeah, it's it, necessary. They're going to reach out to you. It's, I mean, when I tell you, like, I can't even express the disappointment I feel on the inside for, for not being able to Put show them boy. Yeah, man, because they are That's who they are. Saying. This yeah. is Pimp C's son. The yeah. whole world got love. You know what I'm saying? But we can't figure out how to channel that love to this child so he can do his craft and benefit from all the rewards and everything. Exactly. He got to be out there like regular niggas with no options, and now he's in regular situations. Yeah, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Read between the lines, you know. What I mean? Oh, it's crazy, man. All right, then, man. Um, I think that's it, man. We what appreciate you, mean? you. No, we appreciate you for coming I'm on. I'm trying show. to do all the talking now. <laughs> we had a good time, but I just like I say I got everything I was looking for. Oh, um, right, to be right. honest with you, man, thank you for coming on the show. Mm -hmm. And like I say, link me up with them boys, with you, your, your, your son and, and and your nephew or your godson yeah. or whatever you want to call it. Most definitely. And uh, we'll, we'll rock out. Hey, man, I appreciate you. Oh, man. yeah, man. Anytime. And in the platform is here, man. How we looking around this thing? Man, it's a beautiful, this is a beautiful situation. We was here, we've been here a long time. Yeah. Wow. Hey, <laughs> but I'm going to hold you to that. You're going to help me find a man. I told you, I ain't playing no game, man. I, I, all a man got at the end of the day is his word. Hey, man. Everything else goes away but you ain't got no money nothing you got what the word that's all you got the word is what y'all go by to live too your uncles will tell you that in that church mm -hmm. say man thank you for coming on boss talk 101 man hey man it was a pleasure man thank you man and i guess we out huh yes it's a unique hustle